Now then everyone, welcome to Wedding Mavericks Podcast with Lindsay and Jules. Podcast for wedding videographers and photographers where we discuss all aspects of running your business, developing technical knowledge and skills and pushing your creativity. The Wedding Mavericks Podcast is sponsored by Divine Studios, a creative agency based in Leeds, helping businesses across the globe develop web experiences and brand identities. If you're looking for help with your branding or website, get in touch with them for a no obligation chat to see how they can help. And mention Wedding Mavericks and you'll get a 10% discount off their services. Thanks, Divine, for sponsoring the podcast. Salins, what, uh, what's been going down this week? It's half term this week. It is. So uh, for me, it's been quite nice because I've got to spend all the day so far just uh, doing some some nice stuff with the girls we had a couple of we had quite a nice relaxed weekend and then just been out and about as the weather's picking up they love being outdoors so it's been nice to kind of get out and about with them um but we have missed you this week i know i know you locked yourself away haven't you in the studio just trying to keep up up to date with mm. the the edits so that they don't stack up and yeah. um and obviously cause problems when when things get even busier, but um, yeah. I've definitely, it's hard. It's, it's it's okay to to work when from home when you um, you know when the girls are at school and and you, you know everybody else is busy. But then when you kind of know people, you know you know your family are at home, your yeah. kids are at home. Um, you, you you know that's hard, and yeah. it's one of the kind of taking the rough and smooth of running your own business isn't it absolutely yeah and i'm sure there's i'm sure there's plenty of you out there that are that are experiencing that you yourselves right now um whether it's that you're parent to kids or perhaps you have other caring responsibilities or, or, or other sorts of um things that that you need to prioritize as well you know it's it's this constant sort of juggling act isn't it and trying to find the right balance for for things and yeah. and, it, and it there's peaks and troughs with it through the year i think isn't there yeah but, um I don't think we'd change it, would we? No, because it's... Because you don't yeah. get them. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, you know, it, it, this, this is one of the things, isn't it? Mm. The flexibility of running your own business and, and and being able to kind of choose when you work and how you work and things. It's, it's brilliant. Um, but it is just yeah. it is just difficult when, when the kids are at, at school and you know you've got work to thing in. I think if I could just say anything, any, something to, to kind of people who are, are in a similar situation out there, you just got to... You, you've got to take take a little bit of time for yourself. Take time for your family. You won't get that time back, and just just make sure that you communicate and and set reasonable expectations with your, your couples, your clients, and you know make that time. And don't feel like you can't take that time. It's really important, yeah. um, and uh, that leads nicely into what we're going to talk about today, yeah. which is you know good communication, good customer service. Yeah. It's um it's kind of the second part, isn't it, to what we started last week when we were talking about the kind of process, what we go through from when we receive an inquiry from somebody and then how do we then convert that? Yeah. What process do we kind of go through to, to be able to convert that so that they are they do then become a client? So today's kind of part two of that, um, whereby we're, we're sort of thinking about... Um, how efficient you can be with your time um, and how your customers feel about the service that you are delivering to them. Because if um, if your customers are happy, if they are impressed by you, it's going to lead to a better relationship. And I know last week we talked about the importance of viewing what we do not as transactions, and I don't think we've ever done that, but it's about building a relationship with your clients because, um, yes, ultimately it will be one day in which you, uh, perhaps just one day, um, where you will see them and you'll physically kind of provide your service to them, but there's been an awful lot of build-up before that, hasn't there? And so, rightly so, there should be a lot of work that goes into building that relationship and kind of maintaining it before, during, after... I think, yeah. um, you know, having a good relationship with your clients, it makes your job easier. Yep. It's going to be less stressful. It's going to allow you to enjoy what you're doing. 
give Absolutely. you the kind of mindset that you need to be able to kind of inject that sort of positivity and that creativity into into the work that you're going to produce for them um and hopefully kind of at the other end of that it should lead to um good feedback you know positive if they've had a positive experience with you, with you that should lead to um, positive feedback, perhaps even hopefully sort of testimonials, good reviews, things like that that are left by your your clients. Yeah. Yeah. So if we talk about customer service and if I just put that idea in your head, mm. um, everybody who's, who's kind of listening or watching, customer service. I, I know that like when someone says customer service, the first thing that pops into my head for some reason is like being in a clothes shop. And, and the person sort of like coming up to you. And I think it must be because, you know, people in that sort of role are called customer service assistants mm-hmm. or whatever. And I don't know why, it's the first thing that pops into my head. But if you think about it, we get customer service in every sort of industry, mm-hmm. in every type of workplace, you know, whenever there's a service product involved, mm-hmm. Whatever that is, you know, whether you're a, a doctor, a solicitor, a police officer, mm. or you're a, um, you know, someone doing something like what we're doing, you are basically everything is customer service based because anything that involves those personal interactions, and you know, even even being a shop selling a product, you've got to have some kind of customer service, even if you don't have a physical shop, even if it's online, mm-hmm. there's got to be, you know, there's mm. got to be a way to contact and communicate and, and, and how do you make that process straightforward for people? Yeah. So customer service is one of those things that's a bit hard to quantify as one thing. Mm. There isn't like a, this is customer service. It's like a collection of behaviors and actions. So teaching someone how to, provide good customer service it takes a bit of time it's not something that you can just say read this manual and people will all of a sudden be amazing at giving customer service because it's it's almost like learning a set of behaviors and traits isn't it Mm -hmm. and sometimes performing those behaviors or traits even if they're not natural to you even if that's not your natural character there are plenty of people I imagine through in the world who aren't particularly the most um, obvious people that are giving customer service, but they might have developed skills over time to be able to kind of perform those skills and and be in that character. Yeah. Um, hopefully, it's better if it kind of comes natural to you. Um, and we, the two of us, have developed sort of these skills over two decades of working in customer service mm-hmm. type roles prior to starting our own business, you know, very di- lots of very different kind of roles, but def- definitely all of them from being sort of my first job at 14 years, all working in a cafe to, to before we did this, all of those, you know, all of the roles have had customer service and, and been quite focused around it at some point. So it's really important to us, isn't it? Yeah. It's always been a, it is literally the bit, biggest pillar in our business. Yeah. I would say that if we said, Someone asked us, uh, what's the most important thing in your business? It would not be our photos or films. No. It'd, customer service would be first. Mm-hmm. Um, and then maybe the work. Yeah. And 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 there might even be other things. I, I'm, I'm not in the right sort of place at the moment. It's quite late now to think of all the other things that we could say. But yeah. I, definitely, I definitely know that we purposefully have customer service at the heart. Definitely. And uh I think for for a number of years, because of um, either feedback on the day or what follows after delivering um, final product to to clients, a big part of what has come across in the feedback and that um, we're kind of we're, we're quite proud of, mm. um, and like you say, we do kind of try to sort of go the extra mile and make sure that we are delivering on our sort of customer service or client experience. Because there's such a, a big proportion of what we do that I think has kind of enabled us to, to make the progress that we have that is centred around that stand, that level of customer service. Because, yeah. you know, we're, we're not the best photographers and videographers in the world. However, um, I think that we've been able to kind of uh, grow and develop our business in the space of time that we have because... 
the 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 kind of the thing that underpins all of it is, service, is the standard of service that we're giving people. Yeah, and that's the thing. And we might have already mentioned this in a previous episode, but you know there are literally unless, like Lindsay says, unless you are the best videographer or photographer in the world, or one of the best, you know, in the top in the top like point five percent, one percent of all of the photographers and videographers in the world, unless you're in that bracket and you are literally sought after by, you know, celebrities and millionaire billionaires and stuff, because you're the best. And obviously quantifying what the best is is a difficult mm. um, is a difficult one. But if you're not in if you're not that person, which you're very unlikely to be if you listen to this podcast, you need something else. Because everybody's decent at what they do. That you know, there are different standards and there are different tastes of what we all like when it comes to photography and videography. But the standard what I, I mean, this is something I would say, the standard over the last, you know, two years has jumped massively. Mm. There are more people doing it than ever. And the standard I'm seeing when I'm looking at people's work is so high compared mm. to what it was when we started doing this five years ago. Yeah. There was there wasn't what we were doing five years ago. I think stood out quite a bit because there was so little, you know, like it. And now I'm I'm you know it's it's inspiring and intimidating at the same time. There's <laughs> people that are, are doing all sorts of stuff, and there's lots of people doing this stuff. So. If you want to stand out, it can't just be based on your work. Your work's important, but you've got to be based on other things. And customer service, I think, is... is um, we, we would say that's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. So we can't obviously go through how to be... How to present yourself, how to talk to people, how, how to behave. We can't really tell you how to do that in a podcast. Um, we can We could discuss it. And we could discuss the do's and don'ts, but we're not going to patronise people. What what I'll say is, this is how, this is a very summarised way of saying how to kind of deliver decent customer service. Listen, show respect, and show empathy. Um, you know, people want to know that you care um, and be genuine about it. Mm. Um and then the six P's, I've come up with the six P's. <laughs> so be personable, be patient, be positive, be prompt, be proactive and problem solve. And by doing those things, that's going to, I think, going to put you in really good stead. If you remember those things... Um, and, and try and model your kind of approach to dealing with people based on those things, I think that you'll be successful in presenting a good image. You basically want the experience with you to be easy and frictionless. Mm. And um, it doesn't mean you've got to be a pushover. It doesn't mean you've just got to agree to everything. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that, you know, you have your... You, you set your stall out, mm -hmm. but just deliver things in that manner yeah and then I think it's so that I think that's a, a really good place to to start when it comes to you and your clients directly but then it shouldn't start and end there should right. it no I think um that's, yeah you're gonna say it's with everyone absolutely yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely um so it'd be all well and good wouldn't it <laughs> you know pulling out all the moves <laughs> on the lead up to this wedding, making your clients feel really good, building this great relationship. And on the day, you're great with them, but then everyone else, you're just really crappy with. Yeah, you don't want to be, don't want to be rude to people yeah, because you no, think it doesn't matter. Goodness me, no. It, it goes wider than that. And again, we'll, we'll, we kind of come back to how genuine you are as a person and this th this thing of customer service a lot of it will be fueled by you in a very natural sense so you're injecting your personality into it your you know your manner with people the style of communication that you use so again we're not asking you to kind of be something that you're not here yeah, it's not about being prim and proper necessarily mm. if, you, if you're like me yeah. you know 
Um, the, oh, well, yeah, the, try, try and find, apart from when I'm around the kids, try and find like a sort of a, a paragraph I use where I don't use a swear word or some kind of vulgar language. And um, I'd say that's partly, you know, that's, that's kind of how I've always been. And uh, yeah, pre- my previous job didn't help, but... Um, it's not meant offensively, is it? But that's that's no, the point. That's the point. That's I don't have a. I, I don't intend. It's just how I speak. It's never aggressive. Yeah, no, it's, it's how just... I speak. Um, and also, you know, I'm. I'm the first one opening the door. I'm the first one, you know, helping the old lady across the street type thing. I'm not trying to make myself <laughs> out to be some kind of saint. I'm just. I'm explaining that you know. Th- there's 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 a conflict really with me, <laughs> in the in the way I am. But I, but I know when when not to, you know, drop the F-bomb or whatever. So I don't do it with Mother at Bride, but I might do it with Groom. And I think if, if I think we can all kind of appreciate that. Yeah. And you, you read your audience, don't you? Yeah. So it's, uh, so I, I emphasise just, just before on, on kind of thinking about the wedding day and you're thinking about the other people there as well, but you could go even wider than that because you're thinking about the other professionals that you might come into contact with. Um, on that day but again before during after also other suppliers that that are involved in this particular couple's day so with your good customer service you are not just thinking about the couples themselves because yes you've put some time and effort into building that relationship on the lead up to the wedding but it's not like you're going to turn up on the wedding day and only be nice to the couple (laughs) and then start being really crappy with everybody else (laughs) <laughs> some sort of psychopath <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you're not going to do that so it goes much wider than that it's not just about those two people it's about every person that perhaps connected with that wedding that you are going to come into contact with direct contact with I would say so that's going to be perhaps um family members other guests that are at that wedding other professionals so the suppliers that are involved in that yeah. But then also, even wider still, you're not just going to pick and choose your couples or the weddings that you're going to behave in that manner with. So it's it's even wider. It's got to be a kind of concept that something just naturally you're very comfortable with. Yeah. And that your kind of personality, your manner with people, you're kind of infusing that into your own style of customer service. Yeah, and, and everyone's going to have a slight different take on it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So I said to think even kind of wider of that. So we're not just thinking about on the wedding day now. We're thinking about all the inquiries that you receive, you know, and last week we went into detail about how you're going to receive, uh, sorry, how you're going to deal with that initial inquiry and in what way you're going to deal with those people up to the point where hopefully they then become a, a client of yours. So think about also outside of the kind of direct relationship that you have then started to build so you're thinking there on your socials you're thinking you know who out of their kind of circle of family or friends as well who might be paying attention yeah to kind of your sort of activity whether that's online what they're seeing of you on social media for instance what they're seeing of you at other other events and then of course the the wedding itself um because you'll have that pool of people that circle as i've said that were present at the wedding but then there'll also be people that are connected to them that weren't necessarily at the wedding as well so don't kind of lose sight of that as yeah. well. Don't think it's all just about that one and day. That could be as much of as a, a comment you make on social media that yeah. that is in the public domain. Mm-hmm. So you know, don't be a dick and say something that doesn't line up with what you you know what what the goal is here. Yeah. You know, because that could that could really affect things. Yeah, absolutely. And if we think about the bookings that we've had or a proportion of the bookings that we've had that have come as a result of that person being in some way connected to or an acquaintance of a couple that we've worked with. And whether it's word of mouth, whether it's been on social media or kind of looking at us directly, but it stems from the kind of service that you've provided to another couple for their particular wedding. Yeah. 
um and and as a result of that those people have decided to kind of reach out to you and they become an inquiry or they become a lead in in their own right yeah you're constantly so, auditioning aren't you <laughs> yeah that's what it is you're yeah. constantly auditioning wherever you are whatever you're doing particularly on a wedding day yeah you are auditioning yourself for potential other clients yeah because just kind of you, you know th- think think of it from this way um you are working with a particular couple that are getting um Uh, sorry no think of it as a couple who are actively looking for suppliers and they need a photographer or a videographer and they start to ask around people that they know who are already married or um, it might just be people that they've asked who have recently been guests at weddings and so they ask them for any kind of recommendations do they know anybody anything like that and so your name might get dropped in there and so then those people start to pay a little bit of attention towards you so they start looking on your socials like you've said they start paying attention to the things that you're sharing that could be pieces of work that you're sharing that could be things that you are saying comments that you're making things that you're kind of uh, tuning into yourself and and kind of knowledge even that, that you're sharing and advice for couples it could also be that they're doing kind of a general search on google because they want to have a look at your website they might take a look at different directories blogs magazines things like that it could even be that they go to a venue and they're going to like a wedding fair or something like that or a bit of a showcase day and lo and behold who's there it's that photographer or videographer that was recommended by someone else. So by whichever means they find you, whatever path they take to be able to find you, they are looking for some kind of proof, something to kind of back up that initial, if you like, recommendation that they were given. Yeah. So always kind of bear that in mind. And I mean, there's no kind of um, stronger advocacy of your work if you like than it coming from a personal referral exactly yeah so um more and plus more than one person and again in last week's um episode you made reference to the wedding that you'd just done that week yeah and we talked about multiple touch points and stuff yeah yeah and there happened to have been a number of people that had mentioned uh, our wedding videography photography business to the the groom of this couple before he'd actually decided to to kind of take some steps towards seeing if it'd be possible for us to to work with them and that's you know that is so powerful yeah in its own right isn't it and so um then you kind of move to um but basically wh- what what you what you're wanting to do is have all of this you you, you don't you're just trying to provide the same impression across all of these platforms. Yeah. All of these little places. Yeah. So with all the multiple touch points, it's really important that we're getting the same kind of impression. Yeah. And, you know, it's just just chalks up. Yeah. Kind of a consistent message that's coming from different sources. Yes. If you like. Yeah. Yeah. So... Each kind of authority that mentions your business is like this extra point on the scoreboard. Mm. Yeah. And imagine, you know, a combination of all the different places, um, along with a website full of great work and your helpful and succinct information that you've got on there, your strong test testimonials or reviews that are either on your website or, or on Facebook or Google or whatever. And think about how much customer service and good impression has been developed before we even know about this. Mm. We don't know about this couple yet. This couple, we've never spoke to them. We are not aware of them. And right now, for your business, there will be potentially tens of them out there Mm. that have never contacted you. You do not know they exist. If you get a reasonable amount of inquiries every year, there, there could be tens of people, tens of couples right now who are considering you for their wedding. They haven't contacted you, they still might not, but you, you've got to be always thinking like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's passive. 
So that all of this, all of this stuff we're talking about is completely passive. We've done it. We've we're doing it passively with no real com- direct mm-hmm. thing towards someone. We're not even. We might not even be running any kind of marketing campaign or anything. It's just presence, yeah. you know. And we're doing it automatically through our branding, and marketing, and also how we've connected and direct, you know, directly interacted with people. Mm-hmm. So, at the point where they inquire, let's say that this one of these hypothetical couples inquire, uh, we're probably somewhere between 25% and 75% of the way to getting booked. Um, you know, and that's just through all these things and the information that, that they already have about us. Mm-hmm. Um, so at this point, you know, that we enter the process of dealing with that inquiry because they've made the inquiry. Um, all the elements that we talked about last week come into play. So, it's really important how we deal with that initial inquiry. But it's, you know, this process, it's not a quick process always, you know. It could be over hours or days. Mm -hmm. It could go on for weeks. Um, You know, they may inquire with us and rule us out fairly quickly based on availability or price. Um, You know, if they've got a budget and they're ready to make that buying decision, um, and they've got the info they already need, it, you know, it, it might happen straight away. Mm. Um, and even whether they book or not, we still want to leave them with a positive experience. So they might not be able to afford us or we might not be available for them, but, you know, they might have been desperate to book with us yeah. and they only didn't because we weren't available or... They didn't have the budget. So they might know people in the future, though, that would be able to afford us mm-hmm. or we might be available for. And we still would like them to recommend us. So, you know, every interaction, even one that you know mm. you aren't going to be able to continue with, is important to deliver good customer service. Yeah, That's yeah. why we always... We always try to refer people, you know, ref- give them some names to refer them to other people. Yeah. Or we, you know, we, we're always, basically the the response when we're booked already, when we're not available, or the, the, the kind of way we deal with people that when we're not in budget is the same as if they booked us. You know, we try to be helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's, it, it needs, it, it needs a bit of a plan, doesn't it? And it because it has to be intentional. Mm. No ac- aspect of what you do in your business should be accidental. It should be strategized, planned. It should be something that you've thought about in advance and you have know exactly, you know, it's purposeful. You know exactly why you are going to do that. And... You know, you may deliver good customer service and experiences kind of extinct instinctively mm. rather because that's just who you are. That's how you are with people. But if you know that you will kind of formulate processes to just aid that, to assist that, then in addition, you're going to be able to be consistent. Absolutely. With that standard of your customer service. So we can't, of course, let everything else grind to a halt in our business just because we want to be able to deliver an exceptional service to everyone that's going to kind of come through our door. But think about most things that you do. So whether it's buying something from a shop or online, whether that's eating in a restaurant or ordering a takeout, you know, all of these things are driven and delivered to you using a process so again whether that's in person whether that's online there's a process there yeah. delivering our customer service should be no different yeah i mean if yeah if we are if we're running our our business you know this isn't a this, this isn't a hobby for us we're running a business mm-hmm. so we should we should you know treat it in the same way and just like those other big businesses do. Yeah. And at this point, we could talk about process, 
mapping within a business, etc. And you know, we could talk about uh, how businesses manage projects and things like that. Um, however, we want to try and keep things simple and practical for your wedding business, your, your wedding photography, videography business. So here's basically how we're going to do that. So very simple. We can we can break it down to we create a consistent and efficient way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So we're going to set out a step-by-step -step plan, which we can refer to as a workflow. And you'll have a workflow for your edits. So why not have a workflow for your customer service? Yeah. Yeah. Um, establish a way of gathering information and storing it and a way of analysing it. And the reason, you know, th this is a function that is really important anyway, like f from a legal perspective, data protection and things like that, we have to we have to have some sort of way of of storing information that um, that we can monitor and we can you know dispose of and and we can keep secure and everything. So we have to kind of have a process for this, um, and everyone's process will be different. But having a, a way to analyze it is also a really important part of your marketing and and your kind of business strategy. Um, and then with that information, we need to be able to use it and take actions in an appropriate way. Yeah. So that's kind of just having a, a process and gathering and using information. Um, how are we going to manage those processes though? So, you know, there are different ways. Everybody does things differently and will have their preferred methods. Mm -hmm. So that could be using a pen and paper, a notebook or something like that. You could you could basically keep all of your information just written down by hand. Um, you could. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but some people will still prefer that. Like imagine some of the people you worked with in the past in our previous jobs and you try to get them to, to get on board with using a computer. Mm -hmm. I know this, I know things have changed a bit, but it's no different really, is it? There are just, people have a preferred method because that's what they're used to or that's what they're comfortable with. Yeah. And then they, and then they kind of trying to make people make those changes. So, some people find that very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, true. But it's not very efficient. It's not very secure and it's not very organised. Mm. You know, even if you've got a notebook with some kind of system in it, you know, like, crikey, days gone by when I were a kid, parents used file faxes and things like that to organise their diaries and information. <laughs> you know, now we've got an iPhone and it's got everything in it, hasn't it? Don't need to make notes or have dates and times in, in things. We've got, Amazing technology now. Yeah. Um, I guess a step on from that would be to kind of make things electronic. Yeah. But using an older, kind of less uh, advanced method of electronic information storage and gathering. Okay. So, you know, things like word processing documents, spreadsheets. Yeah. You know, things that, that these things... They, these sort of like came out when we were younger and that, that they were revolutionary, you know, because we'd moved on from pen and paper to, yeah. to using them. And uh, you might be using Google Forms, Google Docs, spreadsheet, you know, uh, what is the, I can't remember what the Google Numbers one. Is, is it called Numbers? Num oh, oh, no, no that's, that's Apple. That's Apple's isn't it? But yeah. It's just his Google spreadsheets. There you go. So they've got, you know, we've got, We've got, everyone's got access to that now, whether you're using like Microsoft or using Apple stuff or using Google stuff. But we've got access to all that, all that, and we could we could store things that way. And yes, spreadsheets do allow for sort of searching and, and kind of interrogating information and analysing information. But I do think you've got to be you've got to be a bit clued up on spreadsheets to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. And it's still not the most efficient way. I wouldn't have said no, because in terms of keeping track of where you're at in your communications with each inquiry or with each client. Yeah. I'm not sh you know, how do you, how do you sort of do that on a spreadsheet unless you've got every step of your kind of workflow or your process? 
Um, and if you are kind of so on top of that or you're able to to manage that that you know it's it's ticking the box or an x in the box when that action's done or that action's done it's still a lot of work client. it's still a lot of work isn't it so that's the thing if you're still using if, if you're using google like docs or microsoft office or whatever using with spreadsheets and mm-hmm. word processing documents you know, you might have the, the information electronically. And I know I know, I see people posting in groups and forums and things about that's what how they've managed their, mm. that's how they manage their information and their client com- communications and stuff. Fair enough. If that's what works, fair enough. However, just ask yourself, how much effort are you putting into all of that? Mm. Because you, you've got to manually keep on yeah. top of that. There's no automation. You, you can do some automation in, in spreadsheets. Again, you've got to really know what you're doing, because I used to be, I used to work in data analyst. Uh, I used to be a data analyst, so I, I kind of know how to use spreadsheets. But still, I know how much effort goes into creating things. Mm-hmm. So there's some issues there. So what else could you use? You could use like project management software. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a few different ones out there. Something like Monday, Asana, Trello. Mm-hmm. There's a massive list of, of them. And these are these are pieces of software that, that anyone could use and subscribe to. There'll be there'll be different versions of it, free free and paid subscriptions. Um and I'd say that that from what I've seen of them, I've not used them extensively. It's not something we've needed. No. But I think if you if you're working in commercial work and you've got multiple employees, mm. and you've got lots of people working on a project, I think we're using a, a project management tool piece of software is like would be invaluable yeah i just think at this stage if you're if you're a one person business or there's just the two of you like there is with us i don't think that i think that maybe those those softwares could be a little bit too complicated maybe to yeah and perhaps just a little bit um because kind of with so, something like a, a project management tool like you've said you you may be looking at um either longer term or more complex projects of work and so what you're kind of looking for is not only efficiency in how you're doing that but you're looking for accountability I guess to a certain degree as well because each person will be given tasks or assigned roles yes. and then times w- within which to, to kind of complete them and and for me just in my mind and, and you'll have to forgive me I'm sure there'll be people that have far more experience than than I do with that but I kind of that I kind of that's how it, that's, yeah, that's that makes kinda, total sense, that, doesn't that it? That would be well suited to... Yeah. Yeah. So what is the thing like then? It. What's the thing that we're going to use? That's what we're leading on to. Um, uh-huh. and, and that would be a, a CRM or customer relationship management software. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, I would say, it's more... It's, it's, it's kind of watered down project management software, but it's focused more on the client than yeah. the internal workflow yeah it's got some elements depending which one you're looking at it's got so it's going to have some elements of internal workflow but it's going to be more about storing client information and being able to then use that information to assist with the client Mm. experience the customer experience it gives it gives a degree of kind of structure doesn't it so we're talking about relationship building but also um sort of what goes with that is not just those soft skills that, that, that you spoke about um, and the, the six Ps at the beginning kind of thing, but we need some sort of structure in place, don't we? Yeah. To kind of along that journey, along that sort of building relationship and throughout the kind of process of yeah. what it is that you're providing for them. Yeah, yeah. And, and rather rather than relying on, you know, your trusty notebook and your favourite pen or your, your Google stuff because it's, your Google Docs because it's free, it don't cost you anything, mm-hmm. um, th- you know, this is going to be the thing that helps you mm-hmm. to deliver that service you want to deliver. And honestly, the best money that we have spent in our business mm-hmm. and the thing that's made the biggest change to our business, more than any piece of equipment or educational resource, has been using a CRM yeah. and we're very fortunate that we we took the decision very early on in the business while we didn't have as much going on mm-hmm. we didn't have as we didn't have as much work on there weren't as many inquiries there weren't as many clients to deal with we already 
decided this would be a good idea. Yeah. So we've we've been spending this money now for years mm-hmm. and I still think that it's the most amazing Definitely. If I don't know what we'd do without yeah. it. I can't imagine going back. No. No. And thankfully it was because kind of within the communities it is as it were then so sort of social media groups that we were part of, it was always a topic of conversation, wasn't it? But you it know, wasn't a topic like today. Oh no. It wasn't a topic like no. today, like how 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 do you do this or which CRM do you use? Yeah. It was how do people deal with this? Mm. Because you could and you could see there were these regular issues coming mm. up for people because they couldn't find information. They'd lost information. Yeah. It was taking them too long to yeah, perform that's tasks. that's it, sorry, you're right. Not, yeah, to be more specific, not which CRM are you using? It was it was the, the issues that you've mentioned about that kind of manually managing all of that kind of personal information and the information about clients and their sort of, you know, how do you keep on top of that? And I've got 50 plus yeah. clients in the year. How do I manage all of that? Yeah. And there weren't. Right. So at that point, there were f- a lot fewer people using CRMs. Mm-hmm. There were a lot fewer CRMs on the market. And at the time we trialed a few, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like we just kind of started using one and that was it. No. We, you could do free trials and, and there was free versions of, of stuff and um, which was limited, but y- you could get a feel for how the software would work. And we tried one called Tave. Mm-hmm. It was very complicated at the mm-hmm. time. I don't know if it's simpler now. Uh, we tried Light Blue. We tried 17 Hats. Um, there, are, there are more now around uh, like Honeybook and Dubsado, Sprout Studio, HubSpot and too many to list. Mm-hmm. But at the time, the CRMs just weren't as much of a thing as they are now. So um, what what happened was we came across one and it was through a search and it was called Studio Ninja. Now, if you're looking at CRMs or if you're in the groups and everything, you've probably heard the name Studio Ninja quite a few times. And it comes up a lot because it's, it's a very popular one now. But when we first started using it, it was it was brand new. And I didn't realise how new it was. Mm. It's um, like, like looking back on it, it was it was like, it was basically the smallest of smallest businesses. Um, and they've done amazingly, you know, over that time to, to grow their, to grow their customer base and develop the product. Mm. But the reason we settled with Studio Ninja was because it was so, the interface was so friendly, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, you didn't need to be too technically minded um, to use it. The features were were good enough then, as in like it had everything that we kind of needed it to do. And this is like nearly five years ago when we were first starting, like four or five years ago. And it's it's been developed massively since then. It's, you know, and they are continually updating it and developing it. The team are very responsive. Mm -hmm. They're great at communication. They've got really high level customer service. And you could just kind of see that that's the sort of business it was. And that's why we yeah. kind of, we, as well as the usiness of it, you know, being able to use it, it worked with that way out, way we kind of did things. And, you know, just, it, it, I don't know how to explain it, but if you just put this next to one of the other ones I mentioned at the time, and it might be different now, but at the time you, you looked at Studio Ninja and you were like, oh, I can understand what is, what goes in that box and then I understand what, what how to actually click through and do this. The others were way too like complicated and you had to almost be a coder to be able to you needed like a basic knowledge of coding to be able to like make them work and I just didn't get on board with that because yeah. I ain't got time to learn coding mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think it helped that the they are practitioners or the founder is, is a practitioner he's a photographer yeah, himself exactly so and that's what it, that's what this of, thing was wasn't that, it it was, yeah, it was that, a that made was for photographers so by photographers relatable like, yeah yeah yeah. And I think, um, you know, just a l- little disclaimer, we're in no way kind of no. affiliated with um, Sh- Studio Ninja in, in terms of, you know, they don't sponsor the podcast or, or sort of anything like that. So we're, we're kind of openly talking about this purely as a, as a customer. Yeah. Of, of, of theirs. Um, I mean, I definitely would want them to sponsor the podcast <laughs> if they're listening. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, as it stands, they're, they're not a sponsor um, of the podcast. It, it is just a, we, there's a, there's an actual admiration for the product because of yeah. how much it has helped us to develop our business. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, 
the one thing um, that by introducing that into our business, we went for a very from a very um, time consuming, manually led, losing track of. Have you done that? No. I'm adding that. Have you responded to that? No. I thought you were gonna. Oh no. Well, how are we gonna keep track of that? processes because as we started to to get busier and to need to manage more clients you know we did just didn't have the workflows in place no and so by introducing what was for us the right crm it enabled us to be able to set up and manage workflows so that we could always follow the same step-by-step process to be able to manage um each stage of, of our sort of customer service um and client experience yeah so you know whether it's it's kind of the the pre-booking like we've talked about that kind of conversion from inquiries or leads to the actual booking but then post booking as well and then the the kind of remainder of that journey and that's what it's enabled us to to do it for us it provides a, a single place to be able to store information um take actions where we need to um multiple people can access it so between the two of us um our one employee my mother-in-law <laughs> your mum you know as and when kind of needed she's able to access that um as well so you can log on through different devices different locations you don't need to just simply keep it on the laptop or a storage device or sort of notepads notebook. or anything like notebook yeah <laughs> where's, where's that notebook you i can, need it um you know you can um you can be actively be kind of checking and accessing any information that you might need in relation to to your clients i.e on your phone um all the time, anywhere or anywhere that you need to. Yeah. Not all the time, because obviously we don't work all the time, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so tell us a bit about then, Jules, what kind of functions, if you like, is a CRM going to help you to be able to manage? Well, I mean, overall, it's going to help you with most aspects of, you know, the information that you're going to gather, mm-hmm. of, of, of managing that. Um and that, that's kind of the main thing on the surface. So you, you're going to collect client information. It's, it's almost like a bit of a database. That's that's the basic kind of function. Okay. Database of information that you're going to gather about, uh, whether it's a, a prospect, an cl- a, a inquiry, whether it's a, someone that's actually booked you to do the job. But you're going to gather this information somewhere and it's going to store it and it's going to be cloud-based so you can yeah. access it wherever. You can access it on different devices. You don't have to have a particular device or whatever the, the information is, like a notepad has stored on, on it or anything <laughs> like that. So that's the base, the most basic function that it has. But the then if it was just that, it would be useful. But there is so much more that it does, then this is where it becomes a little bit mind-blowing, I think. <laughs> because what what w- what you would have to do if you weren't using a CRM is you would have to have either multiple different things, places where you stored stuff or did functions. Yeah. Or you'd have to use lots of different apps and lots of different services, yeah. which you might have to pay for, slash you would also have to keep on track, keep track of all them. So what we're doing here is we're bringing a lot of things into one. So we've got the client information in there. The next thing it helps us with is is communication and like, you know, good customer service is built on good communication. Yeah. So communication, you could, uh, and you could sort of say is, is one of the main, you know, the biggest functions that you need to be good at. And you've got, Let's say you you communicate mainly by email. I know some people use DMs and stuff, but if you communicate like us, mainly by email, it links up with your email provider and you can basically sort of all all your emails come in and out of the system. So you can view them for each client in like lists. So basically in your list within that client's kind of page, you can see all the in and out communications in yeah. one place. You're not having to go searching through your emails for every time you've had a conversation with that client. Um, you know, I'll look through like a huge list of emails from the last year to see it. You just got all of them there. 
And that in itself is amazing. Mm. Then you've got all the templates. So rather than having to write emails out all the time and f- sort of like type a load of stuff every time, or let's say you've got them stored somewhere like on a Word document or a note or whatever, and you've got to copy and paste your, your email into the email every single time and change little bits of it. You don't need to do that because it's got templates built into it that you can kind of write and customize however you want. And then you can actually insert variables into it. So if you've ever used something like a mail merge, which might be a bit of an old school thing now, but you know where it like basically, if you were sending letters out to people, it'd change the address and stuff on there. Well, you can change all sorts of information. You can change names, you can change, you can insert quotes, you can insert um, like, you can insert so many things into this by by adding bits into it that are like variables. Mm -hmm. Um, And it does automatic sends emails automatically so you can set that up at different time schedules so you don't even have to physically write or send any emails unless you're trying to respond to a specific question or something if it's just about sending the next piece of information or asking for the next piece of information back all that can be automated yeah right the time that that saves is insane Mm -hmm. you know so like we've got the client information we've got the communication And just those two things on its own are hugely powerful. But it also saves a lot of time because it deals with the leads for you. So it collects information. You've got a form that you can create in there. You can create it, customize it, ask whatever questions, information you want. And then you can embed that contact form on your website and it, it looks like, you know, if if you've got it set up properly, it looks just like you're on the website and then you just enter the information through the website it goes straight into the system no you don't have to physically enter the information in now you know if you haven't if you're not using one of these you're probably every time you get a contact form you would have to do something with that information next it wouldn't automatically be in a system where you can just leave it and just go on from there Mm -hmm. that's what this effectively enables you to do so you, you've got all the information listed there. But the great thing is, then if you want to send out um, a quote, all your products and packages, um, which can be all done separately, but they can also be done together as a template, mm-hmm. are in there. So you just literally, if you want to create a quote, you just create the quote and link it into the email that you're going to send back. And that's as much work as, in, as involved. Which is like, you know, can you imagine, even if you were having, even if you had a PDF brochure with your prices and stuff on, you, you still got to link it manually every time. And it's not personalised unless you've got, you know, you might have to have multiple PDF documents depending on what service they're asking for and things like that. Um so that, 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 the quoting function is, is fantastic and for dealing with leads, it is just seamless. And then you've got jobs. Um, so when, when someone's booked you and then you, you're kind of going through as a job, in there you've got, um, you've got all, the, all the details of the wedding. You've got your contract and everything that's built into the system. They can sign it electronically in there. And then you've got all these questionnaires and stuff that you can create. So you can create as many questionnaires as you want you can customize those, ask whatever questions you want. You can have drop down boxes, ticky boxes, all sorts. And you can just send those straight in there. And then the information is stored in this in the system. You can print it off if you want. But it, you know, that in itself just means that everything is stored in one place. You're not having to go and find the Google form that you sent to that client and then look at that information and, and where where is that? Which is it, you know, which folder is it in on my Google Drive? <laughs> you know, it's very simple because yeah. it's in the client's folder mm. on this one place where everything's done. Mm. Then there's the payments. So, you know, you, you all the payment stuff, the invoicing and the payments are all taken through there. You link it to Stripe or PayPal or you can do bank transfers and you're just automatically sending out. You can use the email function to automatically send invoices out. You've got a client portal, so the client can look at their contract, they can look at their invoice, they can look at what package they're getting, um, and they can fill out the questionnaires, all in their own like little area that mm-hmm. they get sent a link to. And so they just click on that link, and then they can just access all this information, and they can complete it for you. 
you know they can make the payment they can, can complete the questionnaires look at their own um look at their own what what package they ordered and things yeah. you don't have to answer any questions you just have to send them a link and it's it's it, they you it's mm. it's in a way that they'll be used to doing when they buy other stuff online yeah and i think that the really nice thing about the client portal that it creates as well is that that in itself this this that, that gives like an additional element of you know oh that that this is you know my client experience this is yeah. this is my own client portal it's just oh this is just for me that's it my, and and you know that that and it's that that in itself you know that's that, that's just kind of it's extra, isn't it? A, yeah. It looks better for you. Yeah. There's no, um, there's no risk here of, you know, like um, with using your Google Docs and things like that. Let's say you've got, you know, so in the next couple of weeks, we, we said you've got four weddings. If we were using Google Documents, we've got four clients there that are all kind of at the same stage um, leading up to the wedding. How big of a risk is there of copy and pasting? Yeah, they're and wrong. <laughs> the wrong names or yeah. just little things like it that is. but still if you receive a, a document or if you receive an email that says hi rachel and sam you know you're not going to be happy if, if that's not your you know, name we don't have true. that we don't have that because it's it automatically no. pulls information through that's that's relevant um and then you know i mean obviously that in itself all that is amazing but, you, you know, this also helps with your calendar. So it integrates dates and it integrates leads, it integrates um, jobs, you know, whatever you want it to really, you can take, you can choose, but it integrates with other calendars. So if you use like Google Calendar or iCal or whatever, you can make that information all pull through and then you can see it all in one place, which is really mm -hmm. handy. It has integrations with accountancy software like QuickBooks and Xero and gallery providers and album designers and you know it can basically if you get it set up right it can pull all the payments through and everything and and so that you know even your bookkeeping is mm -hmm. half done for you it won't do your expenses yet um you've still got to do that but you know your income it's it's monitoring that for you mm -hmm. and all of this is like the the other thing is you've, you've got a dashboard where you can look at um, information it analyzes information for you on the dashboard mm -hmm. so for instance you can you can just easily find out how many of your inquiries came from a particular source you can look at your revenue you can look at how many jobs you've got in a month you can look at how many leads you got in a month all sorts of information on there you can look at up, upcoming jobs tasks all sorts of things i mean i don't think we even use half of the functionality on a regular basis mm -hmm. um because there's, there's that much of it mm -hmm. Um, talked about the CRM, other stuff we use to help us. Calendly, which is a scheduling app. Um, we use that to schedule calls. But it's it's also built, that is built into some CRMs and Studio Ninja are working on building that into theirs. So, you know, in the future, you won't even need to really use that. Mm. But the, the point is, is, you know, it's there. Calendly, we don't pay for it. We use a free version. Mm -hmm. Um, and that really, that's that's an extra thing that's really helped with uh, communication. Yeah. Uh, Zoom and phone calls. Um, we do physically print stuff out sometimes, you know, and I'm just talking about how we do a fi things efficiently. It's mm -hmm. good to have a physical print out of like some of the questionnaires and things for the wedding yeah. day. Not into using uh, paper really for, for various reasons. Oh. But, you know, it's good to have that print out just in case you've got an internet issue that day. Mm. Um, Stripe for payments, card payments, won't go into that, I've already talked about. And then we use things like PickTime and Vimeo, YouTube and Instagram for, for kind of delivering. Um, and the, the reason we're talking about that here is because they're actually part of you delivering a client experience yeah. using those things. Because if you think about PickTime, I don't know if you use PickTime or if you use Pixie Sale, shoot, but if you're using an online gallery service for your photos, you know, having something that looks professional works seamlessly, really important. Um, Video, oh, pff, I could talk about that all day, but there's lots of different things and we've tried different ones and we use Vimeo for, for a good reason. I won't go into that, but um, you know, even delivering, even using social media like Instagram, you know, 
it's part of a customer service experience because if you show someone's film and you tag them, as long as they've said that they're cool with that, that's part of the experience because then it's like, oh, my film's getting shown by them and it must be, you know, it must be really good and they must be really happy with it if they're showing it. It, it just provides, it's all part of the experience, it's all part of your experience. So, yeah, Linz, yeah. Gosh, and I breathe. need to take a breath. Yeah, goodness. Well, thank you, you know, giving us loads there, Jules, and I think um, it's... Well, it, it, it's really, it's that. I think that's really good. I think that will be really useful for people to to just kind of um, whether you know you might already be using a, a CRM, whether it's something you're in the process of considering, but just sort of seeing um, or just hearing rather about all that kind of functionality and the different options of how it's going to sort of help you manage your client experience I think I think that's golden I think that's really really useful to to kind of take it one step further I think if we if we sort of look at how the customer service process works from sort of start to finish for us yeah by using Studio Ninja or it might be whatever whatever software that, yeah. that you're sort of using and the, the the one kind of disclaimer that I would say the one rider I would say is that this process um it can vary because um as we know and we talked about last week we do receive inquiries in enough for a number of different ways sometimes don't we so um for instance where we're not getting a direct inquiry that comes through the um the website so that will come through on that inquiry form that's embedded onto our website. If we're getting DMs, for instance, so this evening I've had somebody um, send me their email address on an Instagram message. So what do we do in that instance? Well, we've talked about before the fact that that's something that we will manually need to input into Studio Ninja. So it's great even that you get the option to be able to do that. So it's not solely, there's flexibility there, isn't there, which is so important because... Um, it's, you know, it acknowledges there that you're not always going to receive that inquiry directly through your inquiry form. So the facility is there, the flexibility for you to be able to manually input them, which I think is, is great because if you want to be able to, and you should be tracking all of your leads, then it needs to be within your CRM. Yeah, even, even if you don't necessarily think that person will book, so it might you might feel like it's a bit of a waste of time mm. manually entering it, but mm. it's worth 30 seconds, a minute of your time to do it just for tracking yeah. purposes so that all your leads, you can see how many leads you got, you can see where they came from. Yeah. And yeah. get an accurate figure. That's it, yeah. And of course, when, uh, and we know all too well because we're, we're just about there with this new website oh my and, goodness. and with the, re, the rebranding. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a big undertaking, and isn't it? It is, to, yeah. To, to do all the copy and everything. Yeah, because it's, you know, just as a kind of side note, all the things that we've been talking about over, over the last few weeks is just, it's, it's made us really, really think kind about of, it. yeah, really think about things, really kind of sit back and, and think about how we are how we want to be able to convey what we're all about and what we're delivering to people actually on the website and so striking this fine balance between having enough information on the website um when it comes to to kind of answering simple questions that potential clients might have um yet not having too much that they end up being overwhelmed yeah. because ultimately we, we we want them to be naturally inquisitive don't we? we still do want them to inquire um and so we want those new leads to be able to fill out the contact form we want it all to be nice and straightforward so that all that info will then immediately come through into Studio Ninja. And how do we know that someone has inquired on the website? We get a nice little email into our inbox letting us know that we've received a new inquiry. Yeah. Um, from there, we everything can be viewed as a new lead for us. Um, you mentioned a few minutes ago, Jules, Jules that you were uh, create a quote. Yeah, within the, the system, do, yeah. first thing that we do, uh, check that we're available. Yeah, 
<laughs> so they were available um, depending on what service they have inquired about, whether that's just videography, whether that's film and photo. Um, we will generate a quote from there. And then, as you've said, the link to that is embedded within the email template that's set up with that init initial inquiry. Um, and that well then um, what we normally do so even though um, there's a, a high degree of automation here with what we're doing in terms of sending that email we also we, we always make sure rather that we're careful to because we talked about personalizing things so we're really careful to to kind of change the first sort of paragraph or into the, and, and into the second one sometimes so that the variables that are already included in there are the name the date of their wedding, because those are two things that are on the inquiry form. And then we fill in the location of where they're getting married. And then uh, we just kind of tweak um, acknowledging how they found us. So whether that is through Instagram, whether that's looking at on Google for you, by whatever means that they've been able to find you, we acknowledge that. And then if kind of in the comments section of the inquiry form, they have made reference to a particular aspect of, um, of our work uh, or that somebody has referred us onto them, then we're careful to mention that as well. And that then completely transform what we know is an automated form into something that's very personal for them yep. and so that whole process for us just takes a, a couple of minutes doesn't it yep. you know it used to take ages didn't it when we were doing this from scratch It'd probably take you yeah, half an hour plus to to deal with an inquiry at least yeah. at least 15 minutes i mean yeah. it, it, when you get this process down you can do it in literally yeah one to two minutes. Yeah. It's very quick. A couple of minutes, yeah. So um, the the other thing that we also make sure that we include in that inquiry form is also uh, the calendar link. So you mentioned that we use that. And that gives them um, all within that initial inquiry. So we've dealt with, here's the pricing information for the service that you want to know about. We've told you that we're available. We've told you a little bit about how we work. Now, let's set up a call together. So here's the link so that instead of you kind of taking out of the equation this um, this potential kind of back and forth of, well, we're available whenever you can be available or, you know, gives a date and time up, just takes yeah. it all out of there, give them access to that link in there. And we only use a free account for this, don't we? Yeah. Don't cost um, us anything, don't, yeah. It doesn't cost us anything for the for cal for the calendar link, so that enables them to just book a Zoom call, or on some occasions, if they prefer, just a phone call with us on selected dates and times that we can kind of, um, because obviously, you know, we 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 can't be available twenty four seven to to people, and we have a, a family and other things, so it kind of enables you through the week to choose what dates and times are going to work for you, and it gives them the flexibility of choosing from from there. So um, yeah, that 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 for me is is kind of a, a whistle stop tour of why you know that C why that CRM for us and the process of the workflows that we've uh, sort, sort of created, why I think really that that's enhancing the experience. The, the service, customer yeah. service, because yeah. that initial inquiry is dealt with so effectively and, and efficiently, isn't it? Yeah. There's the, you, you're getting back to them as quickly as possible and it's the, the information that's necessary is always there. So obviously you've talked there about what we do, you know, with with the inquiry, uh, up to the point where we've responded to them. Mm -hmm. um, but after that, the great thing that as well is that we can send multiple follow ups, which aren't automated, you know, which are yeah. automated. Sorry, at set times apart. Mm -hmm. So we're basically making sure that we're 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 keeping up with the customer service with the people that haven't initially you know they haven't responded straight away yeah. to our inquiry there could be lots of different reasons for this that's why this is important we've talked about sort of follow-ups on the last podcast mm. so i won't go back into that but basically we don't ha we can do the follow-ups and they're templ templated and we can put the information we wanted in there and we they're automated so we don't have to do any extra work mm. we can send the follow-ups we can send them when we want them to be sent and we don't have to even touch it. So once that leads in there, 
and we've sent the initial response, which has taken a couple of minutes, there's no more work. Yeah. Right? The only type's going to take us any work is if someone asks a, a specific question or mm. something. But if they're just, if they haven't booked yet, or even if they're going to book, the only bit of work we're going to have to do is potentially like a call or answer specific questions. Everything's already there for them. There is no more extra work to do. Um, if they don't book, we just wait until the end of the follow-ups um, and then we just archive the lead. There's no no work involved. And the good thing is, is the information is still stored there. So then when you get a second inquiry or a third inquiry, it sometimes happens from the same person later down the line, almost like they've totally forgotten they even inquired <laughs> with you. Like that's how it is with some people, isn't it? Um, you know, you can actually see that that person's already inquired two or three times. Yeah. Um, Cause that's a good thing. It doesn't completely delete it from the system. Does it? It, no, it, it refers to it as being archived. So yeah. you've so got all the information there. Yeah. So it le- cause it lets you know when it recognizes that either that client name or that email address yeah. has previously been entered into the system. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is stores that, that that's helpful. Um, if they book, so that person goes on to book. We've got a whole kind of post. We've got a whole booking sequence. You know, like we said, we've already, we've sent the calendar link so they can easily make book that call. Mm-hmm. And then all we have to do, because it's like linked up with um, with our Zoom, we literally just, it, we just fire Zoom up at the time when it comes up in the calendar that this call's happening. Mm. And uh, it, it the Zoom call's already set up. Mm. We don't have to send a link or anything like that. So it's that's a, you know, having calend- the calendar link in there is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, 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 we've we already sent the contract out because the contract goes out with the quote. And if they accept the quote and the contract, it will then go to like a, an initial questionnaire where, where we get like booking information and it will generate an invoice for the deposit. So literally there's no more work to do, even if they book. We just have to we just have to answer a question if they ask one or show up on the call, mm. and then afterwards we've got a whole post booking exper- sequence which is is triggered again by like with elements of automation in there. So at different points it'll send an, an email like the questionnaires or it'll send an email to set up a pre wedding call. So there might be extra things we need to just do in there like if there's a pandemic and we want to sort of check in with them or whatever but other than that a lot of the time it takes all of the communication uh, effort out so you can give this excellent communication and you can gather all the information that you need and you can set up calls and stuff with them but you're not actually having to do anything physically not having to sit down and manually type that out each time no or copy and paste over from another document, like we've said, whereby you're running the risk of kind of yeah, you're not confusing. You don't the information have to even whistle. press the button to send because no. it's sending it for you at the mm. right time. You're not having to remember. Oh crap, we've got two months to go. I better send that email. Mm. It's just doing it for you, mm-hmm. um, and we're tracking all this information in one place. You know, we'd have to search in emails. We'd, we we can see all the comms there. Honestly, I cannot tell you just you've probably guessed now because of how long we've been going on about it but I can't I just can't understand why someone wouldn't be using this you know whether it's whether it's this or it's another CRM just honestly game changing yeah. and if you aren't using one and you used one it'd blow your mind just how much time you're saving it, it it's proper saved so much time in our business and we, we regularly get comments from couples and other people that go on you know even people that don't book us yeah. will comment on how you know, oh, it was really well laid out, the information, you know, thank you, you know, your communication has been really good. Mm-hmm. So it's just just how smooth the system is and it's constantly been developed. There's more features bringing out this year and it's going to make things even more effective and streamlined for us. Yeah. So, yeah, 100% the best investment you could make. Um, Liz has already mentioned we're not currently sponsored by them, mm-hmm. um, but we just, we just, Totally. We should maybe be on some kind of commission should, yeah. after this episode. <laughs> we, just, 
<laughs> we just proper believe we proper believe in this product. So you can you can find if you are interested in having a look at it, you can find a referral code that everybody gets a referral code because the whole thing's grown by people referring it. Um, you know, we've referred several people. Every time we refer someone, we get twenty percent off our subscription, and if you sub sign up, you get twenty percent off your subscription. So basically, if you want twenty percent off uh, in the show notes, you'll be able to find the Studio Ninja code and just use that if you if you if you do decide to sign up to it. Um, what you get basically is that's twenty percent for life of you using the the service. So actually, it, it you know you can get some other deals with fifty percent off and things like that for first year, but. It, it probably saves you more if you do a 20% over the lifetime of your thing, especially then if you refer other people, you end up with a free subscription, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. If you want to check it out, have a, have a go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is like uh, nearly 11 at night now. <laughs> but we've gone through such a lot there, haven't we? But... Um, yeah, I think hopefully that's that that's been helpful. <laughs> we always say that that's that's the the, the sign of hopefully every, that's been helpful. Hopefully that's been useful. But uh, no, honestly, if um, you are in a position where you are considering potentially moving on from something that you have to manage on a more manual basis to to looking into a, a CRM. As Jules has said, Studio Ninja is just one of many that is available out there. Um, so and they're all going to be good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So whatever stage you are at in your business, it could be that you have tried and tested one. It might be an injury in its own right, and you're thinking, yeah, I didn't have the best experience with it. Um, I'm going to try another one. Please do that rather than kind of moving away from it completely. I think definitely worth trying to, to find something else that will, will sort of suit your needs because, as we've said, as important customer service is, it's huge, but you can't possibly devote all of your time to it. So help yourselves. Help me, <laughs> help, help you. <laughs> and uh, invest in something that's that's going to help you to, to be able to... <laughs> you ruin that now. <laughs> that's going to help you to be able to, to deliver a nice, consistent and efficient service for your clients. Okay. Thank you. Um, If you do have any questions about any of the thing that we've spoken about in this or any of the other episodes, um, any comments that you'd like to make or suggestions for uh, any future episodes, then please get in touch with us. We we do enjoy hearing from you. Thank you. DM us on Instagram or Facebook at Wedding Mavericks. And if you want to visit the website, it's WeddingMavericks.com and you can also watch us on YouTube on our Wedding Mavericks channel. If you want to see more content whether it's on youtube on the podcast um or if you want to check out what we're doing on socials we promise we will be a lot more active on there in the future (laughs) um that's at wedding mavericks um and uh, please subscribe like follow all that business um it'd be great to get a review if uh, if any of the information that we've been talking about on any of these episodes has been helpful and has helped you in your business we'd love to hear about it Thanks for supporting us with the podcast and thanks to Divine Studios for sponsoring it. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye. Bye.